Hey everybody, I'm John. This is Miranda for the Worst Comic Podcast Ever, and we are here to talk to you about Season 1, Episode 8 of Legends of Tomorrow. It's called Night of the Hawk. But before we get that, huge news for Kansas City people who are fans of Legends of Tomorrow and of Doctor Who, because we found out just today that Arthur Darville, better known as Rip Hunter and Rory Williams, is going to be in Kansas City in just two months. So, uh, I would love to host the panel at Planet Comic Con for Arthur Darville. Miranda, what would you say, what, what do you want to say to the people who run Planet Comic Con? <laughs> Please let my dad host this panel. We'll be back right after this. Alright, Miranda, let's start with where we left off last episode, which was the showdown between Captain Cold and Heat Wave. And uh, what what happened? Well, what we saw was Captain Cold blasts his heat gun right at Heat Wave, mm -hmm. who was probably his, his former partner or whatever. Right. And so what happened was I don't, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know what happened. Like he comes back to the ship, and everybody thinks that he killed him. Which probably means he doesn't. I mean, <laughs> if you know anything about stuff like that, right? Probably didn't happen. Probably didn't happen. So, what did he do to Rory to Heat Wave? What happened? We don't know. And he hasn't told the other members of the crew. So it's kind of weird. There's this whole nebulous thing there, but there's definitely something up. Because what they wouldn't just have him. Oh, and then eight months later, with oh yeah, I shot him. He's dead. Like that. He's boring. not dead. No, no way. Not a chance. So, no, I think. What's up? What if he snuck him back onto the ship? Frozen. What if he's frozen in the cargo hold of the ship? This kid right here has got it going on upstairs. I think you got a good. I, I think you got a good point there. So in this episode, they are in the town of Harmony Falls in like 1958. I want to say 1950s somewhere. Yeah. And um, you know, 1950s America was a great time for. Interracial couples, black not really. people, not really. women, no, no, I don't and it was. homosexuals. You know, I think it was, uh, unfortunately, pretty much straight white guys was pretty much who it was straight good for. Straight white people. Uh, uh, uh. I think it's interesting because uh, I think this was a great cast and a great decision to say, you know what? We, we can't just blend in anywhere in time with the people that we are. Uh, Ray and Kendra go walking around town and people are like, and You're bad. now, at first we thought maybe it was just some other teenagers being mean to Jefferson because he's black, or maybe a cop hitting him overhead just because he's black. It turned out there was more to it than that, but it didn't have to be. These are these were all very, very realistic situations. Oh yeah. And uh, the relationship that we saw between Sarah and the other nurse, I think, was these were some very real moments uh, for each of those people. I thought they that was very, very well done. Yeah. I will say there were a couple of nice moments. One was the whole kind of meeting the neighbors, tuna salad. That was pretty interesting. You know, if you would ask me things about Vandal Savage, uh, I don't think, and I'm, I know, I've read a lot of comics. I don't think I knew that he makes a really good tuna salad. Casserole. Tuna casserole. Either way, <laughs> there is a difference. There is a difference, but it's still, I think you get my point. Yeah. Tuna stuff. Right. Um, so they had Hall H. Now, Hall H was referenced to, do you know? SDCC. Right, San Diego Comic Con. So Hall H is where the crazies are. Yeah. I've, All the panels. Oh, yeah. I went to San Diego Comic Con last year. Truth. That was a true. There's no fiction there. That's just straight up true uh, statement. Um, I was a little surprised when it turns out that if you take a meteorite, Sometimes that meteorite turns somebody immortal. Sometimes it turns them into a hawk god or goddess. And immortal hawk god or goddess. And sometimes it turns them into a vampire. With wings. And a creepy face. No I've done, to people. I've done a lot of astronomy. I've studied it. I, okay, it's fine. It's comic book fiction. I get it. But uh, I was still a little bit surprised. Although it's interesting. This is the anniversary of the airing of the first episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Which so, is probably why. 
which maybe that's what they were doing. Maybe they did that on purpose. I don't know for sure, but it's pretty cool. Um, let's talk a little bit about Jefferson. Jefferson gets a raw deal. Like, he goes, he's out on a, he's finally out on a date, right? Because Kendra ended up with Ray instead of with him. He's out on I a like date. Him. I like them. They're kind of... They're cute. You, yeah. You'd ship them? Maybe. I yeah. Them out. Right. Uh, and he's out on a date, and then he gets attacked by his date's ex-boyfriend, who's now a vampire. Kendra. That's... <laughs> you're still on the shipping. Well, sorry. Keep up. So... Shh. Would you, I mean, that's a pretty awful deal to be out on a date and you get attacked by the girlfriend's ex-boyfriend who's now a vampire. Who also happens to be a vampire. Right. And then she wins. scratches her. I was still surprised that the cop took Jefferson and just left the girl in the car. Yeah, I was slightly surprised about that. I think that people in the 1950s had more sense than that. <laughs> a little bit. Like, put her in the back seat of the cop car. Like, do something. Yeah. Like, just leaving her there. Maybe he figured she'd bleed to death and he wouldn't, he could blame it on Jefferson or whatever. I don't know. But it seemed weird. Uh, a couple of things I did want to say. I was a little surprised when Vandal Savage and Kendra had their little showdown in the office. And God, he, I bet that was cool, though. He had the knife up to her throat, you know? Why didn't he just kill her? Like, it seemed weird to me that he would, that he would not kill her. Because he wanted to slowly torture her before she died. I guess. I mean, he was, he was, he's always creepy. He's, I mean, kudos to that actor. He, Pretty good fight. Oh, he, na he nails the creepy. But it's, he seemed to even be creepier. Like, the creep factor was even higher. Because he was, like, hitting on her and everything. It was weird. Yeah. Tell me about your dreams. What do we do in these dreams? Easy there, Count Savage. <laughs> What's Still that? pretty creepy, but good job. Yeah. Very good job. So Jax gets knocked out, gets injected with meteorite, turns into a vampire, and with then wings. then gets kind of shot with the freeze gun a little bit. Then Sarah hits him with the her her staff. Like that's a rough that was a rough episode for Jefferson. Poor guy. And he never gets to turn into Firestorm. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what else I think is weird. Okay. Why do they keep sending Professor Stein and Jefferson on separate missions? Like, their two, their powers as Firestorm are only helpful when they're together. Don't ever break them up. Always send those guys together on a mission is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, but the age difference is pretty large, which might not help. But they got a psychic connection. Like, I get that he can try to find him sometime later on, but they've always got one of them's trapped and the other's got to get in, and the other one's trapped and they got to get in. And I get that they don't want to just turn into Firestorm every time, but still, I, uh, to me, it, they're more valuable together yeah, than, they are, than they are apart, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's... There is no I in team. But there's a me. Um, Technically, no. Not, really. not together. There's an M and an E. Okay. Um, Sarah definitely kicks some butt. Oh yeah. In this episode, mm -hmm. uh, she knocked out a couple of the vampires and uh, kissed that nurse. That was cool. Mm -hmm. And then um, Kendra, she was holding her own against Vandal Savage. It I was mean, like yeah. once once she got him away. Uh, she delivered a couple shots, dodged a couple blows, um, but dodged the knife, didn't die. There's that. That's <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. That's a big deal, I think. Then Ray comes in, bam, blasts him out the, through the window. That was pretty awesome. And it's cool that he he doesn't have to have the whole suit. He can just have like the gauntlet on and do a blast. That's kind of like cool. Iron Man. Oh, they don't. I don't think they like when you compare him to Iron Man. Well, sorry. <laughs> It's, it's legit. Similar. It's kind of like Iron Man and Ant Man had a baby. Not literally. So everything Iron gets. Iron Man and Ant Man had a baby in the DC universe. Right. So then everything gets packed up. I don't even know why pack. Like they went back and they folded all their clothes, but then when they were coming back to the ship, they weren't carrying any luggage. Maybe they had it in the car or something. But they were walking to the ship. They were getting ready to go. What car? Maybe they had, like, give it to some other. It seemed weird. I know, it, part of that was just to give Ray and Kendra a chance to have a little quiet conversation time. They're together. And him to say, partner, and she to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> So there was that. Then, they're walking back to the ship. Kronos is attacking people on the ship. 
But they don't know that yet. All they know is they walk up and all of a sudden the ship goes bye bye. Flies away. Like, uh huh. Can you imagine? You've gone through time. You're in 1958. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the time traveling ship that you got, that you came there on, the Wave Rider, TARDIS, whatever it is, <laughs> flies away. You know, that kind of, remind, kind, of, kind of reminds me of like a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> like half of them? Some of them. Not yeah. All of them are like that. Well, I, I, I think obviously, I kind of like the cliffhangers. They leave us, uh, leave us wanting more. The only bad thing about this one is we have three weeks until the next episode. There's no Legends of Tomorrow next week. There's no Flash next week. Is there a Supergirl? Yes, there is. Supergirl's going to be back next That's week, good. so we'll have a chance to get an uh, update on that one. So next episode, we've got to figure out what's happening with Kronos on the Wave Rider, what's happening with the people who are on the ship, what about our three friends who are trapped in 1958, how's it all going to go down. I'll tell you what, I'm excited. Three weeks, yep. end of March, and then once that happens, it'll be less than two months until Arthur Darvo is here at Planet Comic Con. Also, next weekend, next weekend, I'm going to be in Chicago, C2E2, and Melissa Benoist and Kyler Lay are going to be there. You're not, are you a little jealous? Um, yeah. Well, it'll still hurt you. All right, we'll see you next time, everybody. Hope you enjoyed uh, this review, and uh, look for some of our other reviews. And on behalf of Jerry and Colin and the Worst Coming Podcast Ever, I'm John. I'm Miranda. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.